Hello there YouTube, Devin here again, and uh, today we're back in the land of the uh, Swiss, uh, probably one of my favorite surplus countries, uh, and we got the long puttees out for you today. Um, I'm wearing two different boots, um, because these were two boots that were kind of fielded um, at the same time, uh, depending on where you were in the Swiss military. Um, Standard infantry and like supply and general service people would have got these uh, the ankle boots um, But paratroopers uh, tankers engineers stuff like that special forces um, will would have got these uh, Basically what are copies of the French Ranger boots? Um, they're based off the American m43 double buckle boots um, and uh, you can see uh, puttees uh, were still issued um, into the 60s um, like this with these tall boots as well as the ankle boots but you don't see them used in conjunction with the tall boots all that much uh, in a lot of photos but they were still issued these um, for winter use and stuff like that so I'm going to show you um, how they would have been used uh, one way with uh, the uh, ranger boots here, the tall boots, um, and I'm going to show you uh, a nice way to tie uh, the ankle boots with the long puttees, like how they would have been tied in World War I and uh, World War II and everything like that without um, having the weird excess fabric and uh, that really uh, terrible uh, ununiform appearance where there is um, some gaps and stuff. Uh, up the back and they just look really loose and terrible. I'm going to show you how to uh, prevent that today uh, with these uh, long puttees. Um, I'm only going to show you one way uh, how these would have been worn, uh, the puttees with the ankle boots um, versus, uh, I'm sorry, with the tall boots versus uh, both ways, which you could check out uh, in my winter puttees video. Um, where you see it just over the top of the boot. I'm not going to show you that today because this is considered what I consider a hybrid boot where it's actually a low boot uh, with just a gaiter stitched onto it basically. So we're going to explore um, how to use puttees in conjunction with a hybrid boot like this today. Um, so these are my two favorite pairs of boots actually. Um, so we're going to get into it here then. And I'm going to start off by showing you uh, the ankle boot. Now, I've already tied the ankle boot, and if you haven't seen my other other puttee videos, these are going to have critical information on how to, to properly tie your boots and stuff like that, so please go review that if you want to see that. Um, so we're going to start here then. Um, uh, you want to get your uh, pants all situation, situated the way you want. Okay, I like mine kind of low because then I don't have a ton of slack at the top of my puttee. Um, but you want to do again, how, uh, however you like to do this, where you have, uh, pick up your, your slack uh, and excess fabric, okay? Make it nice and tight around your ankle, okay? And then um, how I like to start the ankle puttees, all right? Is you get a little tail like this, okay? And you lay it straight, right on the front of your, your puttee there. So it's coming straight down, and then I like to kind of fold it over itself, um, so you have just a little bit of a, a tail hanging down there. And what that's going to do is you put that really low on your boot, okay, and it's going to act as kind of like uh, extra padding for when you flex your foot, uh, as well as it's going to help you create a tighter, tighter seal to prevent your putties uh, from slipping up or down. Uh, it's not so much a deal with uh, the ankle ones that I showed you in the other videos because those are newer. Those tend to stretch more. Uh, these are an older, like, World War II woven pair. They don't have as much flex, so they will tend to, to move around on you as far as sliding up and down. So, so then it's just the same process. We're going to do our first layer around. All right. Keep it, keep it nice. Uh, you want snug again, not... Not tight, but snug around your ankle. Okay, get it nice and snug. Snug it up a bit if you have to. Give it a little tug. Um, then you're going to want to wrap around, um, leaving uh, 
a third to half of an overlap. Okay, you can see that there. So again, keep it snug. Okay, going around again. Once again, that third to half an overlap. You can adjust it with your uh, fingers if you have to. Make it look nice. All right. And uh, I'm just doing the nice straight version here today. As you can see, there's no fancy flaps or uh, any folds or anything like that, but we will have to get to that now. When you start getting to the calf here, behind your leg where you see it kind of starts to expand out, that's where you're gonna start not having tight as, as tight of a fit because your calf is just wider than your ankle. So this is where the folds are gonna pick up that excess slack that would be on the sides or back of your calf. And so that means when we come around here this time to the front, all right, see how we're getting that excess fabric right here? And uh, right here in the back, because my, it's tight up here, but it's loose down here just because of how my calf is shaped. So how we're gonna, we're gonna remedy that is this is something you see a lot of uh, people that are inexperienced doing um, at reenacting. They will leave theirs like this because they don't know how to tie their puttees any better. All right, but to pick up that slack, okay, what you want to do is you want to get it the same kind of spacing up the side as everything else, okay? And you want to bring it up a little higher, okay? Put your finger right in the center, so right on the front of your shin, right in the center, all right? Put your finger there, and then you're just going to flex the puttee over it okay you're gonna fold it over just a half fold okay and then you're gonna keep twisting okay so until it's flat again and you get this nice kind of V shape see that and then you're just gonna bring it around okay same old same old keep bringing it around that V shape will have picked up a lot of the slack I'll show you um, I'm gonna do another one here in the front up near the top Okay, just to make it over the top of the calf real easy, make it look nice, finish it off well, all right. And then we're gonna tie it off. Now these puttees, they can't do the tuck method um, because of how long the string is. Um, so I just do the tie method. Uh, once again is in another video and so here we go you see you have a it's not the prettiest um, if you wanted to make it so it had the nice uh, really really nice look uh, not a lot of soldiers cared um, really but if you were going like let's say off the lines and you were gonna go flirt with some girlies or something or get some drinks behind the lines what you would do is you would do this little fold where you get these overlaps every single layer you'd probably do like one or two here in the bottom uh, just because that's going to get covered up anyways and then you're going to do these these folds the whole way up and it's going to look nicer um, and if you want no I'll just show it to you now uh, if you bear with me with taking this apart here now um, it won't take too long I could do this uh, pretty quickly when I have to so we won't even bother rolling it up nice because we're just going to undo it again here all right so we'll We'll get back to, to this part, all right? So we got our flex folded over, everything like that, okay? Now we want to get ours, our patees again. We'll get them all set nice and tight. Fix our pants up a bit, okay? Get that fold in there. slack back in our pants give it the fold put the puttee on leave that little bit of slack in there fold it over okay nice so just bear with me narrating to myself here basically just so you guys know what I'm doing if you can't really see my hand is in the way a lot and uh, my leg around the back of my leg because I don't have a camera that spins yeah <laughs> um, so there we are, first layer around the ankle, okay? And now we're going to put our first fold in then, all right, to make it look uh, the prestigious way. Um, okay, put 
that first fold in to get that V shape in there. See that? That nice V shape. Okay. We'll bring it around up to the next layer. All right. Dealing with this long tail here. Bear with me. All right. Okay, then we're going to put that V shape in again. See that? Just try to try to match. Uh, you might need to look in a mirror the first couple times you do this um, just to match that pattern up every time uh, so that it looks uh, nice. But this will help uh, not only take up the slack, it does take a lot longer to, to do this style though. does take does take a lot of practice too or otherwise you're going to have folds and wrinkles in there and that's gonna make you uh, uncomfortable if you if you don't know how to take care of that right away those folds and wrinkles so okay bring it up again all the way around put that fold in Perfect. Nice and snug, remember. You're going to want to keep this nice and snug. That's the whole point of these putties, uh, was to keep debris and uh, moisture and stuff out of your boots and uh, keep, to keep your pants in a good shape and working order. So. <laughs> Just uh, try to make sure you keep it relatively evenly spaced uh, if you want to look very presentable. Um, it doesn't need to be perfect, obviously. Doesn't need to be perfectly spaced. Um, like I said, uh, if you're going to flirt with some girlies in your uniform uh, back in the day, this is how you would uh, do it. And then when you get to the top, all right, I normally just do the, the one last full wrap around because it's just going to tie nicer. Um, cause, uh, if you do that fold over method, it's not as even around the top of your calf. So this just makes it so it's, um, so that it's finished really flat around the top of your calf. If you just do one last roll without the fold. Um, so nothing super special there. Okay. Tying it off because these don't have as nice a ties on them as the British ones. So... And uh, there you have it. There's the really nice way. As you can see, it's very clean in the back. Follows your calf well. There's no loose fabric back here, which uh, looks nice. You have these nice, uh, this nice pattern here in the front, uh, which looks very uh, presentable as well. Um, so that's how you, uh, how a lot of officers would do it. Or if you have the time uh, and you want it to look nice, this is how you would tie your puttees um, as well. Uh, they should come up to just below your knee. Um, once again, it might take you a few times to get the spacing right and everything like that if you wanted to have that ability uh, to make it look nice. Um, so now what we have here is uh, we're going to move on to the tall boot. Okay. Now the tall boot, i got to untie it here. Thought I could sneak, sneak through and not tying it, but that's all right. So I want my pants a little bit lower than what I thought they would do, what they would be. All right, so now I'm going to tuck in our pants, okay? Um, if you want to put your um, puttees over your, your boots, um, you could probably get away with putting your pants over your boots. Uh, but this one, we're going to tuck them inside a bit, and these are tall boots. So you want to come up to pretty much just the boot part. You don't want to cover the gaiter though so like um so we're not sticking our pants into the boot part like where the laces are technically we're just inside the gaiter here um that is connected to the top of the boot so now we're gonna tie the boots again um once again i tied them the the military standard way uh with the laces uh, if you haven't checked my uh video uh my first putty video uh, you should do that um and it'll uh, be 
kind of nice there. Um, it'll show you how to uh, make your boots look professional, lacing them professionally, um, which is something uh, you should do or you should know how to do if you're if you're. Uh, it's the best way to spot uh, a, a novice or an am amateur uh, from the people who actually know what they're doing. Uh, the people who have uh, that experience, people who've been been actually in the military, um, will be able to point you out very uh, quickly. People who are hardcore historians um, are going to notice stuff like that as well. Um, it's something that irks me, and uh, when I go to reenactments and stuff, I do my best to try to uh, educate the populace. Um, correctly, uh, and sometimes that means educating the reenactors properly. Um, I do it in a nice way. Everyone's there to have fun. Everyone's there for the same reason, so don't don't think I'm doing it just to be a dick. Some people do it just to be a dick, or tell them that their their reproduction's not as good. Well, some people can't afford it, but that doesn't mean they shouldn't they shouldn't participate in history. Um, history is something everyone should get get very involved in. But I, I hear guys. Um, Cutting other other people to pieces over how their pro reproduction uh, uniform isn't perfect, how the how the buttons aren't uh, doesn't have exactly uh, 634 little dimples on the buttons on the brass buttons and stuff, which is just appalling. Uh, why anyone? I well, I mean, the hardcore historians. I understand why they're there to do that. They want to be 100% accurate. And look as close as possible, but the general populace isn't usually going to know that. The average person, anyways. So, so what I'm doing here is, if you haven't noticed, I'm wrapping my putties inside the gator. Um, it's a little bit kind of annoying to wrap them around the skater um, on the inside, because um, uh, it's kind of awkwardly tight to tuck them around the back there by your calf. But it's going to give you a really nice fit. By the time you're done, your your puttees, as long as you're still uh, managing to tie them tight, they're going to fit so nice inside this uh, gator. And the thing is, once you get over the gator, it's it's not going to be as bad uh, to wrap these. Um, it's going to be real nice, as a matter of fact. So. So we're at that part right about now. We're over the uh, the gator now. Um, so I got a couple layers, uh, half layers. Um, what I refer to as half layers are when you have half the putty layer uh, covered uh, by the next layer. Um, just so you guys know that. Um, you don't need to do the fancy folds really until you get out of the boot because the boot is going to hold them in place. Like here now, I'm over the, I'm at the widest part of the calf, so I'm gonna put one fancy fold in there. Uh, like I said, most most average soldiers wouldn't do the fancy folds for every single one. Uh, it just takes too long, and most people didn't care, to be honest. Um, but it does help with the fit. Throwing one or two in there, it does help with the fit. I will say that much. Um, and uh, if you guys didn't notice today, I got the, the full Swiss uniform on. Um, I just Not that you guys can really see it, but I got the jacket on, I got the pants on, I'm using the correct gaiters. Huh. All of that jazz, um, because it'll look nicer um, in the end. As you know, if you're going to go for it, you might as well go for it, right? That's how I feel. Anyways, so... So this is going to show you how to tie your uh, gaiters, uh, well one, the common way uh, with ankle boots, uh, how most gaiters were issued. Like I said, they were issued with tall boots as well, and uh, this is showing you one way to uh, do, your, do your ankle boots as well with uh, what I like to call hybrid boots or uh, boots with built-in gaiters, so here. Um, we have that here, as you can see. Um, gonna give you a real nice fit, help you retain that heat, give you that extra ankle support, bring your boot up even higher, but this is gonna be for people that are going to not need as much mobility, need some more foot protection. They're gonna have something like this. 
uh, standard infantry officers, uh, general service people are going to have that. Like I said, this was mostly for special forces, paratroopers, and tankers. Um, people that needed to keep their laces out of the way, that needed a lower profile boot, needed that extra protection for the heavy machinery and stuff. They would get something like this in Switzerland during the Cold War. Everyone else would get these. Um, but uh, they're super nice. Both pairs of boots are. Both pairs of puttees. Um, I'll stand up and show you now uh, what they look like from the back, from the sides. And there's the ankle boot from the sides. There's the, the ranger boot from the sides. There's, there's some both from the back. As you can see, that, that crossover pattern isn't here in the back. It's just the uh, standard wrap. The wrap only looks cool in the front. Um, it's the left side. You can see how it fits your leg real nice if you tie them correctly. So, and there we go. Hopefully, hopefully you guys like this sort of video. You guys tend to like these videos and you give me a lot of questions. Um, now there's still more I can do with these if you guys are interested. There is putties that were issued with jack boots, um, tall boots, wellingtons, uh, things like that that you would uh, tie a little bit different. Um, there's boots, uh, putties that like when I do my Russian uh, naval infantry, they're issued bell bottoms. Uh, so you have to get kind of creative with the bell bottoms and the putties because when they would storm a beach, um, the puttees were good for keeping debris and stuff out of their boots, but it was kind of, you had to do some fancy stuff to show it, tie them with the bell bottoms. Um, uh, so if you're interested in seeing some stuff like that, some of the more lesser known ways to use puttees, um, and lesser known people that were issued puttees and how to, uh, tie them creatively in their situations, um, I can post some videos on that too if you would like to leave, uh, if you'd like to see that stuff, leave me a comment. Um, if you'd uh, like to see some different other versions of puttees, um, how different countries did it at different time periods, I could show you stuff like that. Not every country did the same. Some countries had special folds and uh, everything you, you could use um, to identify themselves and make themselves sort of stand out. Nobody really cared. Um, but it was something creative to do anyways, especially when you're uh, bored because uh, anyone that's been to uh, combat knows or, or been deployed or anything, a lot of it's sitting around. You're not doing a whole lot. So, you gotta kill kill boredom. Boredom's the biggest killer in a war. Um, not really, actually, but that's how a saying goes anyways. So, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video, and uh, please leave your uh, comment suggestions, uh, any additional information or anything like that you have, uh, in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer those. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.